Hi, my name's Lee Brock. I'm the new Sector Director for the Water and Utilities team within Pell Frischman. I've worked for water utilities. Um, I've worked for contractors, consultants, both in the UK and overseas, uh, the Far East and the Middle East, over the last 40 years plus. Um, I'm a chartered mechanical engineer. I'm a fellow of the Institute of Mechanical Engineers, the IMECI. Chartered environmentalist, amongst a number of other professional qualifications. So I'm here in a, in a capacity to both grow, along with Brad Moxham, the water business, um, predominantly within the UK, but also um, focus on the utilities market. So um, power, gas, telecoms, M&E infrastructure, both road and rail. Yeah, well, my love of engineering started. My father was a mechanical engineer, um, and I never actually thought I would go into mechanical engineering, um, especially not water, um, even though as a kid I used to be on the water treatment works. Um, my second love was actually art, so I, I studied both engineering and art at school, and then through sixth form college. Um, and then it was very much a, do I go to engineering? Do I go into art? And my father said, there ain't no money in art unless you're good and you're not that good. So engineering it was. Um, and I, at that time, I had to look for sponsorship. Um, so I was very much interested in the aeronautical um, industry. I couldn't get sponsorship with aeronautical companies. And Northwest Water actually came out and sponsored me. So that's why I went into the water sector. So through university, I was uh, basically working for Northwest Water is a thick sandwich course as it was in those days in the Northwest. So um, from there, never looked back really. Uh, that, and one of, the, one of the reasons I've stayed in the water sector, I suppose, is every day is different. You know, um, every inquiry is different, every job's different. Yes, they're similar in some respects, but they are all different. So um, makes you get up in the morning and variety of the day. Obviously in the current climate, it's got to be carbon value for money. Um, producing clean water, treating dirty water at, the, at a reasonable price that can be paid by the consumer whilst not damaging the planet. And that in itself is the, probably the biggest challenge which, which the sector's facing. Um, and that's what we've been striving to do and to try and change the delivery model in order to do that over, well, over the last 20 years, but more so, more focused in, in, within the last 10, for sure. So in terms of the next five years, should we say, um, for, for the water sector and the utilities market within the UK predominantly. I can certainly see the digital transformation um, taking more of an upstream role within the water industry. Um, there are already out there digi digital twins, that type of thing for catastrophic mapping for infrastructure failures. One of the, one of the areas that where the water sector lags behind power maybe the gas industry to a degree, but certainly is lagging behind and is looking at it, is in machine analytics and AI. Um, and I do think there's going to be a, a need to sweat the asset because you don't want to replace something which is not worn out. So you might say a piece of kit is, has a 10 year lifespan, you install it for 10 years and what historically has happened within the industry, that's replaced within nine and a half years so it doesn't fail. But in actual fact, it might have run for 20. So there's a much more of a push to put condition monitoring, not just in terms of temperature and vibration monitoring on equipment, but also current monitoring, noise monitoring on all M&E infrastructure, big plant, big equipment, and then monitor that, not from humans, but from an, an analytical point of view to see 
where the anomalies lie and if there's a change then you go and send somebody out to do the maintenance on it so basically sweat the asset so it gives the customer best value for money looks at better operational regimes so i can see the digital transformation coming in the water sector and that's probably going to be a challenge it's probably going to innov be innovative and something that we as pels will be you know in the forefront of pushing along i'm sure From a water perspective, there's, there's quite a few. There's, there's, there, are, there is a green, renewable opportunity on every, on, on, on every commission you get. So every new tr treatment plant, every refurbishment, you can always look at um, more resilient, more efficient mechanical electrical equipment. However, I do think there'll be a, a step change in, in the main philosophy of what traditionally has happened over the last sort of 10, well, 20, 20 years probably. There, there was a push and a philosophy to build major infrastructure, major transmission mains, and vice versa for dirty water. Um, so one big infrastructure, one big treatment plant, and then pump water from A to B to C to all the surface reservoirs and then onto consumers. Uh, and in terms of sewage, capture, collection, and then transmission to very big sewage treatment works because that was the most economical way of doing it. However, that's when power was a lot cheaper. And big, probably one of the biggest consumers from a water perspective is transmission and, and, and pumping. So I can see a philosophy going away from big infrastructure, big transmission mains to more smaller localized package plants, smaller treatment facilities, smaller residential catchment areas things like that and that will reduce pumping that will reduce power and and allow local green opportunities you know, be them solar be be them ground source be them temperature you know heat, heat recovery from wastewater i don't know why we don't do it wastewater is always 12 12 14 degrees you know we might even get down to 10 degrees in in middle of winter so you do heat recovery from the ground why aren't we doing it from wastewater certainly something we should be looking at as nationally and it's not done commonplace across the UK for sure. It's the only way to deliver effectively and economically. Um, you can't expect every business, certainly from a consultancy perspective, to have expertise across the board in every field. So. I know PELS historically have used a lot of SMEs um, and will continue to do that because that provides best value for the client. It allows us to have best, best person, best person to deliver the job. Um, and, it, and it keeps the SMEs going. Uh, and where, where there's bigger opportunity, there's certainly very much a, uh, an appetite to collaborate with other consultants similar size or bigger just to provide the best opportunity for the client to provide best value for money to the customer. I think from a Pell Fishman perspective and one of my sort of prerequisites to to try and grow the water sector uh, with, with Brad Moxham would be to focus on those water utilities that we're involved with, Southwest Water, for example, um, Seven Trent, Thames, but also to look at emerging areas with Southern Water, where we're partnered with Trent um, and likely Bar Hale. So on the new AMP cycle, which is coming up in a couple of years, um, we're looking to try and get onto the um, consultancy frameworks through contractor led opportunities. So that's where we want to see ourselves in the next sort of one to five years, I would say. Um, grow, those, grow those areas, grow those framework engagements, and then expand our contracting delivery market. So with, with, with the likes of Trant, Tilbury Douglas, Elephant Tri, and others.